I'm Jeffrey Wright. When I'm not busy acting on stage or screen, I'm an advocate for the people of Sierra Leone. As a member of the board of the UN Democracy Fund, UNDEF, I'm especially excited to tell you the following story about one of our Sierra Leone projects, building the capacity of first-time parliamentarians. Like all UNDEF projects, it's carried out by civil society organizers working to engage all groups in democratic processes. I hope you'll be inspired by the men and women you're about to meet in this film. The message is clear. Let's not wait for governments to act. Let's organize. Let's be the doers of democracy. There are questions about what comes next for Sierra Leone in West Africa. For 10 years, the country has enjoyed peace, growth, and democracy. But Alhaji Warise is concerned. Democracy, the word is simple, the word is cheap. But the process is very, very expensive. You don't do it um, um, easily. You don't get it easily. The struggle for democracy in Sierra Leone, as Al Haji and his countrymen know only too well, was a bitter one. And one he feels that could have been less traumatic had his people been able to talk to each other and to participate in the politics of their country. And now, after three peaceful post-war elections and tremendous economic growth, he has dedicated himself to helping ensure that this progress will be sustained. Over more than 10 tragic years, Sierra Leone was torn apart in one of the most brutal civil wars in recent history. What at first seemed like a fight to rebuild democracy soon turned into unimaginable chaos. When the rebel group, the Revolutionary United Front, began their campaign of terror in 1991, they were able to dominate a frustrated population stifled by a gridlocked single political party government that for years had been largely unaccountable to the citizenry. Nobody was listening to what the people wanted. It came a time in Sierra Leone under the one-party system when it was on almost everybody's lip that we have to fight here. You imagine how frustrated people would be to begin to say, we have to fight, otherwise this thing will not change. And fight they did. For more than a decade, horrifying chaos burned through a country already suffering under crushing poverty and rampant unemployment. In the end, the war left tens of thousands mutilated by amputation and more than 50,000 people dead. What Al Haji and his colleague Namin Jallo feel more than anything is for their country to ever live through a period like that again. We went through a lot as a country because the, the, the things that led us to war, they are still prevalent in our society. The war was, you know, didn't make any sense. But it was due to largely bad governance. The way resources were being handled, the way the political situation, social issues were being handled, were being managed by those in government. I think that was why the war, you know, came. For Al Haji and Namin, this feels dangerously familiar. Despite economic growth and improvement in the country's infrastructure, power supply, and natural resource development, critical work remains. In central Freetown, young, unemployed men populate nearly every corner of the city. It's estimated that nearly 60% of the country still lives below the poverty line. Al-Haji and Namin felt they had to act. The way our democracy is going, we realized that if we don't step in, if we don't come in and let, on the one hand, the MPs understand that they have this responsibility to the people, and on the other hand, the people understanding the rules of the MPs we, we, we would crash very soon. So Al Haji formed a group called Democracy Sierra Leone to bolster the country's hard won democracy so that it not only survive, but also flourish. With structural and financial support from the United Nations Democracy Fund, the group has set its sights on training newly elected members of parliament. They believe that if they improve the politicians' ability to govern effectively, the country will not only take further steps away from the war, but will also directly challenge the ingredients that fueled it. The group's effort is also about providing a voice to the people so that the politicians hear their concerns. Like so many in Sierra Leone, both Al Haji and Namin are driven in their work through their own painful memories of the war. I was very young watching those things. They amputated arms, they set houses on fire. They did all sort of terrible things. I didn't um, at any point hold a gun to shoot. I didn't join the rebels, I didn't join the military, but I suffered 
the brunt of it. You know, I lost um, family, I lost property. I'm one of those guys that will tell you that, yes, we, we went through horror. In 2002, after 10 years of fighting and subsequent international intervention, the war finally stopped, leaving the country, its people, and its institutions in shambles. And while post-war recovery efforts have been applauded the world over, the war and the way it penetrated every fiber of the country has been slow to fade for those who lived through it. The psychological trauma was on us. It took us some time before we were able to like, get our rise. For Namin and Al-Haji, making sense of what happened during the war meant examining the forces behind it. They decided that the voices of the country's people needed to be heard. It started way back in 2007. We decided to go to every constituency in Sierra Leone, all 112 constituencies, where we talked about conflict prevention, conflict mitigation prior to the elections. We trained um, stakeholders, chiefs, youth, women, about how to mitigate conflict during the elections. But then came the 2012 election. A staggering 60% of parliamentary members were voted out of office. For Democracy Sierra Leone, this lack of confidence in the existing members of parliament and the number of new novice MPs now governing had troubling implications. If for every election we change parliamentarian, we create a situation where we will not be able to sustain our democracy. Um, we realized during that process, most of the incumbent members of parliament lose because the people do not know what are their functions. Newly elected and first-time MP Rosalind Jariatu-Smith agrees that many of her constituents do not understand the role of a parliamentarian and the scope of what they can and what they can't do. The problems we're facing as MPs, not even only for the female, is the fact that the people do not understand what your roles are. We have tremendous pressure from our constituents. They want us to build bridges. They want us to, to construct health centers, community centers, hospitals and the like. They want you to give them money. They want you to, to pay their school fees for their kids. And the money is just not enough. I go to the old so Democracy Sierra Leone set up a meeting for Smith to meet her constituents to explain how she, as an MP, can represent and address their concerns in parliament. Seeing the honorable in front of them, answering to questions, I think it's a leap, <laughs> you know. It's, it's not normal, it's not usual. During the campaign, the issues that were being come up, number one, unemployment. The youth then say they want job, the people they want job. As one of only 15 women in the 112 member parliament, Smith's success as a female MP is of particular importance to democracy Sierra Leone. Concerned women and young people are underrepresented in the current government. They believe strengthening Smith's ability to govern effectively is vital to reaching these groups. It's going to take time. Sierra Leone, our democracy is in the baby stage. We're just coming into democracy now. So for the people to fully understand, it's going to take time. And by so doing, we'll be able to like, you know, you know, you know, create a situation where people believe there is no alternative. The only alternative is democracy. War is not the alternative. Looking at the faces of the assembled crowd and listening to the pleasantries exchanged at the end of the meeting, it's hard to believe that these people lived in a country capable of the horrors that took place only a short time ago. But for Al-Haji and Democracy Sierra Leone, it is these faces that will ultimately determine the future direction of the country. Democracy we are enjoying now was not given to us in a silver platter. People fought for it. You know, people lost their lives for it. People spilled blood. And you want to keep that momentum. You want to, to make sure that the, those who died did not die for nothing. Those who, you know, suffered, lost families, lost property, didn't do that for nothing. I mean, people lost their arms, people lost limbs because we wanted democracy. So for us, it's about um, um, how we maintain, you know, this thing that people suffered for so much. <laughs>